G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole, where on today's first story, OP has big troubles moving out of home from her bigoted parents. So that's fun. Now if you guys love today's bloody good stories, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and get ready for them, cause I reckon they're pretty good. Let's go. Am I the asshole for moving out against my parents' wishes? I, female 18, have several motives for moving out. One, I have issues with my dad. He fits the bill of a narcissist. He nitpicks minor details, controls all aspects of my life, friends, relationships, screen time. We have no privacy, as he constantly checks our phones and says extremely hurtful things. I've tried talking to him and my mum about it, but things never change. Two, religion. My parents are Christians and extremely conservative. They want their kids to live like them, but they tend to force us and manipulate us into acting according to their religion. Three, homophobia. I was outed to my parents as a lesbian by a friend years ago. They don't accept me. They say horrible things to me and put me through various programs to try to fix me. The beginning of this year, they found out I have a girlfriend. They flipped out. Even though I'm 18, they took my phone and kept me in the house for months. My clothing and haircuts are controlled. Everything I do is monitored and my siblings are recruited to spy on me. They are no longer providing financial support due to my sexuality, so I cannot attend university. I would be a lot happier if I moved out. I'm emotionally exhausted and my mental health has seriously dipped multiple times. I've tried my best to comply with their wishes respectfully, But sometimes I've failed, by insisting on cutting my hair and by lying that I didn't have a girlfriend. Even though I haven't been allowed to see my girlfriend, we've managed to stay in contact. She has offered to let me move into her flat with her. It's on her parents' property and they said they would support me financially until I'm on my feet. I was going to just tell my parents on the day I left, but I realized I'd be an asshole. So I told them. I explained that obviously we were having issues and listed basic motives and that it'll probably benefit everyone in the end. They were furious. They told me I'm being selfish and stupid and that if I do this, I will be obliterating the bridge between us. They told me they saw no reason that I'd want to leave and that I was being irrational. My father said I've broken my mother's heart and caused irreparable damage to the family. They told me I'm never going to be successful. They said they won't compromise on anything, but I shouldn't leave. And they are apparently incredibly hurt that I'd want to leave at all, and said they think that I must have told a sob story that they are complete jerks and lied about them, which I told them I only told my girlfriend the straight, basic facts. They are using scare tactics and manipulation to try to get me to stay. I know that moving out in this way is more sudden, but I've done my best to be as prepared as possible, and my girlfriend's parents have been advising me. They think my parents are assholes, and want me to leave as soon as possible for my own health. My parents' biggest issue is that they don't support me moving in with my girlfriend specifically. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, not the asshole. Leave, get on your feet, never look back. Build the family that will love and support you for being you. Family and relatives are not the same thing. And read the book Harpy's Child. Google it to get a good sense of narcissists. Not the asshole. They just want to control you. Leave. Space will be better for you. And if having space doesn't improve their outlook, that means space is even more important for you. I agree, this is all about controlling OP. I'm glad there's good people out there supporting her getting out of that situation. Not the asshole. That line about it obliterating their relationship is such crap. Almost everyone moves out of their parents' house, and the majority maintain good relationships with their parents. The only reason this might be the case is if it was already a bad relationship, and the only reason it continues to exist is because you happen to live together. Is a relationship like that even worth anything? Not the asshole. You can't be an asshole for leaving your abusers. And if your parents were reasonable, non-abusive parents, they would never have reacted that way to you, an adult, deciding that moving out is what is best for you. 
By the way, just leaving them with no warning does not make you an asshole. It makes you a sensible person who escaped horrible abusers. And now, on to the update. So, it's been almost nine months since my last post. I left, I followed feedback, saying to not tell my parents exactly when I'm leaving, and I told them that I was still thinking it over. After an evening of my dad screaming at me about how I was replacing him, I arranged to leave the next morning while he was out of the house. I quickly packed all I owned. After being picked up, my dad called my girlfriend's mom, threatening to call the police. We went back to the house, and girlfriend's dad went in alone to talk to him. My dad even had a buddy come to defend him, but he lost the argument and I left. I have never looked back. I suffered from dissociation and flashbacks, but I'm really healing. I've been going to therapy, as my therapist is amazing. My dad is indeed a narcissist, and I had symptoms of PTSD. But I have made so much progress. I have low contact with him and strict boundaries. I'm the healthiest and happiest I've ever been. I'm working through things that were buried deep. My girlfriend's parents have taken me in and become the mum and dad that I've never had. I have never felt so loved. I have a real family and so much freedom. They are so accepting. Since leaving, I've gotten a pet gecko, came out as non-binary, and I'm currently planning me and my girlfriend's engagement with her parents. The ring is ordered. My girlfriend has been so supportive and she is the love of my life. She's currently sitting beside me and teared up reading my last post. I also reconnected with my grandparents and aunts in the US. They dislike my dad passionately, and I'm going to go there to attend college and follow my dreams. Immense thank you to everyone who commented on my post. It was a push that I needed, and I appreciate each one of you. My heart is full. Edit. Thanks for all the support and comments. I feel bad that I can't respond to every single one of you, but I appreciate all of you. And I should have clarified. I really appreciate the advice that I shouldn't rush my relationship. I am very excited and we are getting engaged soon, but we are definitely only getting married when I'm finished in college and financially stable. I want to be fully prepared before taking that step. Now in the comments. As a mom of two LGBTQIA2S plus kiddos, I'm sorry about your parents. They are wrong. And I'm so happy that you were out of that environment. I only teared up a little because your original post made me want to punch my screen. Bit of an emotional roller coaster there. Lots of virtual hugs and high fives. And OP replies to that, Thank you for being a mom that I would have been so grateful to have. Your kids are blessed that their parent is a good human being who gives them all the love and acceptance that every kid needs. It's weird to be thanked, because I feel like that's how I should be as both a parent and a human, but I get ya. Just know, not all parents are like that, and just lots of hugs. Opie, I was in your very shoes about five months ago. I am insanely proud of you and rooting you on. My dad is a huge narc, and I have an enabling mother. I moved out in March, and I'm the happiest I've ever been. It is so, so freeing, and you don't realize the weight until you're gone and in the clear. And OP replies, Absolutely. I'm so happy you found freedom too. Our next post is titled, Would I be the asshole if I refuse to sell my house below market value? I, 27 female, own a 75% share of a house with my ex, 28 male, who owns a 25% share. The difference is due to my own savings and inheritance money that I put into the house when we bought it a few years ago. Now we are splitting up, mostly because he and I want different things, and he is unwilling to compromise to meet my needs. The house is great, and in the city that we grew up in. He loves the place, and would like to stay as it has emotional value to him, but due to his lower income, he isn't able to buy me out at market value. He asked I sell him my share below value, which would cost me around 40k, so that he can stay. His reasons are because I don't love the city and the house, and will be able to get something equivalent. 
Also because I have ambitions to move abroad, so it's more pragmatic to buy him out than because I actually want the house. I also have more savings and a much higher income, so indeed it will be easy to get a similar place on my own, while that is impossible for him. While indeed it wouldn't impact me that much to lose the money, I just don't think it's fair, as he's been having much lower living costs due to our lower mortgage, due to the money that I put in, and I agreed to give him a share in the first place when I was planning to buy it alone, so he profits due to an increased market value if I buy him out. He thinks I'm an asshole for not agreeing immediately to his plan, and all our friends and family are on his side and calling me a cold, heartless cow for kicking him out after breaking up with him. So would I be the asshole to not agree to this plan? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I might be the asshole as I don't really care for either the house or the money, and he is struggling big time to be able to get his own place if I don't agree to sell him my share of the house below market value. Now in the comments, not the asshole. If your friends and relatives want him to have that 40k, then they can all get together and give it to him. Not the asshole. Absolutely do not agree to his demand. It is not your responsibility to take a 40k loss just because what? That's what's most convenient for him? You've already put so much more into this house than he has. If there is a way to go forward with minimal or no contact with him, for example, having a lawyer handle all future communications, that would be best. Do not interact with any of the friends or family that he directed to attack you and block them if possible. Them calling you a cow is crossing the line. Reframe this one. Am I the asshole for not giving my ex $40,000? You are not the asshole. Not the asshole. Opie's question about devaluing 40k over a 9 year relationship really goes to show how much others have pushed that idea into their head. The one and only reason that their ex has any ownership stake in the house is because OP was generous enough to allow them to buy a share when they wanted to purchase it alone to begin with. They were already taken advantage of once by their ex right here. The ex cannot afford that house, plain and simple. They couldn't afford it when it was first purchased, they cannot afford it now. The house should be sold to a third party at market value, and X can take their own share and buy a more appropriate home for themselves. If everyone else thinks they still deserve the house, they can give him or lend him the money to buy it at a reasonable rate from OP. And now on to the update. Thank you for everyone who commented at the time. Gotten a few requests for updates, so here goes. As per a comment, I told him I already gave him 9 years of my life and I don't owe him anymore. Strangely, he was calm and asked for 3 months to find a way to come up with the money. In the end, he bought my share. I am sure I could have gotten much more at the open market and our original agreement in hindsight was in his favour. But I do care for his happiness and decided to let it go. Like the house, most of the furniture was also mine, and he cried and pleaded for me to leave it behind, as he was broke and deeply in debt, with not only banks, but also friends and family. Like an idiot, I agreed, taking pity. I only took a few items, which I stored there while I found a new place. When I came to pick it up this weekend, lo and behold, he has gotten top-end replacements for the items I did take. Broke? Hmm? My ass. All in all, he was just taking advantage of me and has zero dignity begging his ex for money, furniture, and it's clear to me he was always taking and never giving back. It was a very expensive lesson, and I probably was a wuss paying him off, putting my own financial stability at risk, as that is what happened, for someone who would have never done that for me even when we were together. Not the most exciting update, but I do get a fresh start in a place that is only mine. Now in the comments, you did something out of kindness and empathy. He took advantage. Don't beat yourself up for being a good person. Be glad you are away from this taker. Good luck in moving abroad. Yeah, mistakes were made, but nothing earth shattering. 
cut your losses and move on, knowing that you are better off now that he is entirely out of your life. I'd rather live my life like her. His punishment is he has to live his life like him. Best in life, OP. I really like that way of thinking. I'm gonna remember that. It's how I think about charity or helping people on the street. Others tell me that I'm being naive and they'll just spend it on drugs or it's a con or whatever. Maybe, possibly, probably, but that's on them. I'm doing a nice thing, trying to be helpful, trusting and caring for people. That's how I want to live. If they are cheating me, that is how they live. If you are untrusting and suspect of everyone, yeah, you might be five bucks richer, but that's how you're living. I'm happy. Oh, he is still broke. Probably bought everything on credit. Don't let appearances fool you. And if he did end up borrowing from friends and family in order to buy OP out, won't they be thrilled when he stuffs them? Stiffs them, I mean. Stuff them is good too. And OP, look at it this way. It cost you some money to walk away with certainty. For him to show his colors so decidedly, that purchased you some invaluable peace of mind. Best of luck for your future abroad. And OP replies, thank you. That might be the best way to look at it. Purchasing some peace of mind that despite his smooth talking, he's a selfish money grabber and good riddance with the whole man. Annex post is titled, Am I the asshole for using my life expectancy in an argument? I, female 27, have a brother, male 30, who just got engaged and is planning his wedding. I have a lung condition for which there is no cure, and I make no secret of the fact that it'll end my life early. I recently found out that I'm not going to be able to have a transplant, and that it's unlikely that I'll be here for much more than a few years. So far, only my mum knows this. I told my brother that unless he was having the wedding somewhere that was wheelchair accessible, I wouldn't be able to attend, and unless it was held in or very near a hotel so that I could go and lay down if needed, I could only attend for an hour or so. My brother and his fiance decided on a venue that is both not accessible for wheelchairs and doesn't have any accommodation nearby. When I told my brother that unfortunately means that I'm not going to be able to attend, he told me that some of his friends could carry me up the stairs. I replied that I wasn't comfortable with being carried like a child and that there's no way that I'll be able to sit on a normal chair for the whole ceremony, as my wheelchair is adapted to my seating needs. My brother told me that I was just being difficult and that if I couldn't be bothered to accept a bit of discomfort to attend my own brother's wedding, then when I get married, he's not going to be bothered to come to mine. To which I replied that he doesn't need to worry about coming to my wedding because I'll be dead in a few years anyway. My mum has said that it was really unfair of me to use that in an argument and tell my brother that I'm only going to be around for a few years in that way. My brother won't talk to me. Am I the asshole? Now in the comments, not the asshole 100%. His bride probably had a vision of the perfect place and he didn't want to make waves, but that's not your problem and I don't blame you for not wanting strangers picking up your wheelchair. Unfair to blame the bride we know nothing about. He could be the one with visions as well and doesn't really see how serious OP's condition is if he is used to it. I don't think many people would tell disabled people they have to leave their wheelchair for one. Not the asshole. Also, I love that you throw that I'll be dead in a few years, not to manipulate someone, but just to end a meaningless argument. Boss move? And if I'm ever in a similar circumstances, I will be remembering this. However, I can see how this does come off as manipulative, not gonna lie. Well, not under the circumstances in question, however, since her brother was being an ableist, inconsiderate asshole. Not the asshole. He knew about any accommodations and chose a venue that you couldn't attend and then tried to make you feel bad for not being able to come. Now he's aware that you were not going to live for much longer and chose to shut you out of his life instead of wanting you to attend and spend the time you had left together. It is his wedding and he can choose the venue but he shouldn't force you to feel guilty about not coming. At the same time, there might have been a better time or way of saying your prognosis. I'm really sorry to hear about everything. 
And now back to the post, there is an update. Me and my brother have talked, and we have both acknowledged that in saying, I won't attend your wedding, I'll be dead, we have each said things that are not kind. My brother and his fiance have apologized for being blind to my access requirements. They have spoken to the venue, and they've decided to hold the ceremony in the garden rather than the reception room so that I can attend. The venue has some side doors that you can choose to put a big gazebo on to accommodate more guests. They weren't going to, but my dad has said that he'll pay for the gazebo so that I can be included in some of the reception and then get a taxi to the hotel when I'm tired. I'm glad that my brother and I have straightened things out and that I'm going to be able to see my brother get married. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.